guys, Violet here. Welcome to another episode of True Crime and Art. If you're new here, then welcome to the True Crime family. If you're not new here, then welcome back. Um, if you're wondering what we do here, I tell you a true crime story while I paint something that you hopefully find interesting. Uh, today, we're gonna be painting a crawfish. So um, if you're like, what's a crawfish? You obviously are not from Louisiana, which I am. So a crawfish, as some of you folks might call a crayfish. It looks like a baby lobster. It's delicious and it is starting to get into crawfish season. So I was like, why not? Um, also, before we go any further, don't forget to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, that helps me and it helps you to know when I have another video upload. All right, let's get going guys. So today's episode is a story out of Brazil and you know, I practice these names a lot, but they're Brazilian names and I'm not Brazilian and I don't even speak Spanish at all, not even remotely well. So, um, I'm sorry if that is your native tongue and you are Brazilian because I'm going to butcher these names and I'm going to do my best. Okay. So this is the story of Susan, Suzanne von Richthofen. Okay. God, I think I nailed it. I think I nailed it. Uh, she was born November 3rd, 1983. And Susanna was born in uh, a middle upper class family. Okay. Her dad, his name is Manfred. He was, is a German. Ooh, he was a German in, engineer that immigrated to Brazil where he met Suzanne's mother, Mauricia, who is a Brazilian psychiatrist. Suzanne also had a little brother named Andreas. He was, I believe, three years younger than Suzanne. Now, the family was doing really well. The dad had just secured this big contract with the State Department, uh, so he was doing well financially. And mom was a psychiatrist, like I said, but for pretty much only the wealthiest families in Brazil, because more money, more problems. In 2002, the Richthofen family was estimated at a net worth of about five and a half million dollars, which that is a good amount of money. That is nothing to, oof, that's a lot. Ugh, thankfully, I'm not worth that much money, so what happens to this family hopefully won't happen to me. My kids won't feel the need to do anything like this. So, oh, not to give it away, my bad. Now, the two kids, they grew up this like charmed lifestyle. They went to private school, they took lessons. I just added green to my wall. Now, one day I'm gonna take a picture and show you guys this wall of the paint that I keep splashing on it. Anyway, so the two kids, they grew up, they went to private school. Uh, Suzanne was fluent in three languages because she had all the tutors and all the money. Uh, she took ballet and she uh, started to show an interest in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu which is where our story turns a little bit. At this point, she's going to take Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and she's 15 and she meets an 18 year old named David Kravahos. Now, not David, Daniel, Daniel. I knew I was wrong the second I said it, sorry. Daniel Kravahos. And I'm pretty sure I nailed that last name too. Now, Daniel grew up very, very different than Suzanne. His parents, his family was very poor. They were mechanics. They primarily worked on uh, motorcycles. He had an older brother who was uh, kind of a, a bit of a troublemaker. He was a cocaine addict and they pretty much didn't work. They didn't do anything except for extreme sports, which if they don't have money, I don't understand how they're doing these extreme sports like motocross and skydiving, but that's beside the point. So Daniel and his brother Christian, who are very close, um, they're just bad news bears from the beginning, okay? They, and it's not because they're poor, it's because they make terrible life choices. Well, Suzanne loved her some Daniel, loved. Like he was 18, he was the older boy, he was a cutie, um, he was kind of a bad boy, and Suzanne was very shy, so this was like, this was her jam. She was like, yes. Daniel, my man. So at first the family was, was okay with the relationship because they're like, she's 15, this isn't a big deal. 
should know better. Should know better. So after the parents start like really getting to know Daniel and they're like, oh, he doesn't have a job. He has no desire to have a job. He doesn't uh, do anything but smoke weed all day, every day. You probably shouldn't see him, Suzanne. Well, do you think that went okay with Suzanne? No, she freaked out. And she continued to see Daniel for another two years secretively. In fact, she would buy Daniel's family all sorts of expensive gifts, like TVs, DVDs. Um, DVDs for you young ones out there are the things that like they're circular, you put them in a DVD player and it plays a movie like magic. Um, that's what she was buying for his family. In fact, Suzanne's <laughs> parents went on vacation for two months, which side note, how do I do that? Uh, <laughs> sorry. Daniel ends up moving in with Suzanne for two months and living with her in the house with Suzanne and her brother and her parents don't even know. And Suzanne loved that so much that whenever they got home, she went to her dad and was like, dad, can you please buy me a flat so I can live on my own? Because at this point, she was graduate, about to graduate high school and she was gonna start studying law at the local university. And thankfully, her dad said, if you want to live in a flat, you can get a job and pay the bills and pay your own way. And she was like, oh, no, 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 no. Thank you, no, I don't think so. So that's the type of person we're dealing with here. All right, I'm gonna let that dry for a hot second. Now, in April of 2002, um, Suzanne was supposed to be spending the night with a girlfriend, and she did the old trick of, no, she didn't. She went and spent the night at a hotel with her boyfriend, Daniel, that they didn't even know she was dating. So when, since, so when Suzanne's mother called the friend whose house that Suzanne was supposed to be at, she was like, no, she wasn't here. First off, get your story straight, Suzanne. Like, you're, get it straight. Anyway. So Marusia, Suzanne's mother, is pissed. So she confronts Suzanne and Suzanne confesses to everything. She's like, yeah, I've been with Daniel for two years. So her parents flip out, like flip out and they say, stop seeing him or we are cutting you off, no more allowance. Well, we already know that Suzanne loves the money and she needs it to keep up her lifestyle. Not only hers, but Daniel and his entire family. So that day, Suzanne and Daniel start planning her parents' murder. And of course they rope his older brother Christian into it because everybody needs a good dumb older brother that has a cocaine addiction to help with murdering people. On the night of October 31st, 2002, oh, Halloween, <sighs> Suzanne, come on. <sighs> anyway, on October 31st, 2002, Suzanne takes her little brother to an internet cafe. Now, she takes them about 11 p.m. So her parents are sleeping and she tells Andreas, her little brother, hey, I'll take you to an internet cafe so you can go play video games with your friends. Andreas is like, sweet, I'm so excited about this. So she goes and drops him off and then promptly goes to a hotel with, um, what's his name, Daniel. Daniel and the brother Christian. I'm looking at this, it looks like lips, it's funny, sorry. I should not be laughing in the middle of this. This is not a light story. So Daniel and Christian, they are at the hotel. They have put on aprons and they put on the little baggies on your feet. When I read this, I was kind of thinking like the things that realtors use to, when they're showing houses to keep from tracking dirt. Well, the boys did this so that they wouldn't get their clothes dirty. So they drive to Suzanne's house and Suzanne's family has this pretty big house, so it has a gate that you have to enter a code to get into. Well, Suzanne enters the code to get into the house and they are into the gate area. They go in and the boys wait in the car while Suzanne goes inside the house, disables the alarm, and disables all of the security cameras in and around the house. She goes to the front door and the boys are waiting right outside the front door. She lets them in and Suzanne hangs out in the living room while the boys bring uh, metal bars upstairs. They hadn't already gotten these metal bars prepared. They bring them upstairs and they proceed to beat Suzanne's parents over the head in their sleep. Now, this is where it gets graphic. So if you could fast forward like 30 seconds, it's, uh, it's ooh. 
So apparently whenever you have a traumatic brain injury, uh, it can cause your tongue to lose, you have no control over your tongue and it falls back and becomes limp and it makes a really horrible loud noise. Well, both um, Mauricia and Manfred started making this noise. So the boys freak out and they go get a wet towel to put over their faces to try to get them to stop making the noise. And that doesn't work. So then Daniel runs downstairs, gets a jug of water to try to drown them by pouring it over their face. Now this kills Manfred and I, I don't know, miraculously or not, not miraculously because it's awful, Mauricia is still alive. So at this point, Daniel ties a plastic bag over her head and she suffocates. Now the boys go downstairs, they tell Suzanne it's all done. Suzanne goes upstairs to check it out to make sure that her parents are dead, comes back downstairs. Before they left, they went around the house and they, they took a lot of cash from their, um, their safe and they took papers and they like put the paper here and put the paper here to look like there was some sort of struggle. But these dumbasses, they just, they sat the papers out because they're not robbing the place. They were there to kill somebody. Anyway. So they try to make it look like a burglary gone wrong by taking the money and kind of messing things up a bit. What these idiots didn't do was they left a gun there. They didn't take the gun that Manfred had. They didn't take the jewelry. Um, there were other valuables that normal, normal robbers would have taken. They didn't do any of that. So they have all of this cash. So about three hours after the murder, when Daniel and Suzanne are in the hotel, Christian goes and pays for a motorcycle for $36,000 in only $100 bills. Now, in Brazil, apparently they track people like this. So there was this nice big ding on Christian being like, hey, this guy's been in jail. This guy's a felon. He's paying for things in cash. Let's put him on a radar. So keep that in mind. They put him on a radar. Now, about three to four hours after Suzanne had been at the hotel, she goes to pick up her little brother, Andreas, from the internet cafe. Because remember, he's still at the internet cafe um, with his friends playing video games. Poor kid. So Suzanne goes and picks him up to bring him home. Yeah. So she brings him home. I need to, let me paint some of this. I'm so into this. So let me paint some of this. So Suzanne brings him home and they discover their parents. Now, Poor brother, he like really discovers his parents. His parents are dead. And Suzanne is eerily calm. They call the police and they call Daniel to come comfort Suzanne. The police officer, when he gets there, he's like, this is shady. First off, this, the, if it's a burglary, it's a terrible one because they left all the things. And the papers that are put around here are really put, it looks like they're put here on purpose. And then they look at Suzanne, okay? Suzanne is over there making out with her boyfriend while the little brother is in the corner crying. They're like, okay, this, this is, this is odd. Now, not only that, the day after her parents were murdered, Suzanne was seen in their backyard with Daniel, just kind of swimming in the swimming pool, like, like she doesn't have a care in the world. Um, oh yeah, after that, like the day that her parents were buried, 90 minutes after her parents' funeral, Suzanne had a big birthday party for herself at her house, at the house where she facilitated a murder to kill her parents. Now, about this time, Suzanne is like on the shady radar of the police and they, uh, the police, get this notification about Christian. Now they bring Christian in to ask him like where he got the cash for all of this, the, you know, the hundred dollar bills for the motorcycle. Well, Christian, Christian just straight up is like, oh yeah, we killed them. We took their money. Suzanne put this all together. Uh, so Christian gave him up. The police, they go and pick up uh, Daniel and Suzanne. And of course they were holed up in a hotel with their nasty selves and Daniel and Suzanne confess as well. Now in Brazil, um, whenever you're arrested for a crime, you are actually not held in prison and 
like until you are actually uh, convicted of a crime. So you know how in the US we have like, you have to post bail to get out of jail. jail? Words are hard today, oh my God. You have to post bail to get out and await your trial. And if you don't, you just kind of sit in jail until it's time. Well, in Brazil, you you go about your your life until you're convicted. Now, there's a backlog in Brazil, of course. So Suzanne is is free to do as she wishes. She still lives in the house with her little brother, and about a year into waiting for her trial to come up, Suzanne sues her parents' estate so that she can gain full control of it immediate full control of it. Well, <laughs> the investigators, which thankfully have some some really good foresight, they were like, I don't feel good for Andreas, her little brother, who was still living in the house with her. So the police execute a search warrant and guess what they find? Hidden in a freaking teddy bear in Suzanne's room. They find a revolver. So this was enough cause, I guess, to arrest Suzanne because she was kind of, I guess, kind of like out on bail. Anyway, she's brought to jail and she has to wait in jail three more years until her trial. Now the trial was a shit show. <sighs> During the trial, everyone just kind of blamed everyone else. So the boys said that Suzanne planned it all so that they could get her parents' money Suzanne said that the boys made her do it because she felt like she had to so that Daniel would love her. It was all a big mess. But during the trial, it was said that the boys sat in court and they were crying. They were showing remorse. They, they didn't like to hear the details of the crime. Suzanne, on the other hand, that dirty skank, she sat in there stone faced, and the only emotion she made was occasionally to laugh. To laugh. I'd have been like, bitch, you're going to jail. Bye. All right, I got so into this, I'm gonna add more just to get this going, okay? Okay, thanks for the patience. So the trial goes on, and guys, the actual trial only took about a week. The jury was like, we're not falling for your crap, not falling for any of your crap. So in Brazil, the maximum life sentence or maximum sentence for murder is 39 years. And that is in fact what Suzanne and Daniel got. Um, the brother, Christian, he got 38 years, which I don't know. I thought that was kind of funny because it's like, hey, you're still innocent, but we're not going to give you the maximum. Cool. Which is kind of, it's kind of funny because, I mean, what the heck's the difference in one more year? Um, anyway, so whenever they're in prison, Brazil, I guess if you're going to prison, you want to go to Brazil because they have these different um, types of prison called regimes, which sounds scary, but it's not. It probably is scary. I mean, I don't want to go to prison. So they have these semi-open regimes, which is what Christian and Daniel were in at first, which basically means uh, they can leave, go work and then come back and they have to check in every night. So I guess what we would call like a halfway house. And uh, Suzanne was not in that yet. Now, in jail, even though she's not in one of those regimes, Suzanne actually ends up marrying her cellmate. And they, they're married for a couple years until her cellmate has to transfer prisons. And then they, I guess, get divorced. I don't know, is that what you do in prison? Uh, she ends up, she's dating now a businessman that came to visit her in prison and she is studying to be a, a, an evangelical pastor, which how, how can you date in prison? I don't understand that. Like, why, how do all these people in prison have all these significant others? And I know plenty of really wonderful people that have trouble meeting people. I don't get that. I don't get it. So anywho, Daniel... Uh, he ends up going into like a open regime, which is basically he's he can just check in with like a parole officer. Okay, Daniel uh, he gets married and he seemingly I don't know he seemingly kind of straightens himself out. 
Christian, on the other hand, he got out of jail early before, uh, I believe it was good behavior and making things for local schools or whatnot. Well, that boy wasn't even out for a full year before he's put back in for assaulting an ex-wife and then trying to bribe the police officer that arrested him. Like, freaking idiot. Look, if I could say something about th these folks here, obviously they're murderers, which, not great. But they're freaking idiots. Like, they are dumbasses. Uh, Anywho, my takeaway points from this is, who the hell knows? I mean, like, this kid had everything. I'm talking about Suzanne. She had everything. And it still wasn't enough. I, I, I don't, I don't know. I just wanted to punch this girl in the face. And looking at her pictures, I'm like, you're such a brat. I freaking hate you. <laughs> why, am I, why am I so angry about this girl? Uh, what do you guys think about her? She is just too much for me. I, I, I can't with this chick. I can't. Okay, let me do, finish this real quick and then we'll close. I want you guys to see the finished product. It's pretty cute. Okay, where are my Louisiana people at? You guys, um, have you had crawfish yet? Because, oh, mama needs some crawfish. Okay, what do you guys think? Oh, I like him. He's super cute. So beyond my uh, final summaries of this girl is straight up evil. What do you guys think? You got any opinions? I love to hear y'all's opinions at the bottom. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new and watch something interesting. And until next time, I hope you guys are kind to one another.